Hey there everybody, this is Missy with The Magnificent Method and today we're going to talk about dollars and cents. Um, so I had intended to host a webinar but apparently the internet wants to go down and so my Mac works just fine without the internet and I thought that I would just record a video. Um, <clears throat> I was just about to get ready to you know go through the whole hair and makeup process and I thought you know like I wanted to pump the brakes on that and I wanted to be super real with you and this this is what I look like on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not working or when I'm not you know with a client and I'm just you know being myself and being a mom and this is who I really am and so I want to encourage you to step away from your idea of what it means to be um, you know, the, the ultimate version of yourself in order to obtain what it is that you want. You don't have to be perfect to get what you want. It's a lie. That's an Eric Thomas quote. I will say it again. You don't have to be perfect to get what you want. It's a lie. So this is who I really am and this is what I'm really going to do for you today. Okay, I'm going to teach you guys about the metaphysics behind money. And so these are, this is my street cred, right? These are the books and the systems that I have purchased and I have read and I use in my own life for um, uh, to obtain money, to manifest money, to keep money, to keep abundance um, in ways that aren't, um, you know, uh, measured in monetary ways. And so <clears throat> where I really would like to start is um, currency means flow, like uh, dollars or euros or whatever form you're using, whatever form of currency you're using, this just means flow. And so um, currency goes out, currency comes in, and I want you, I know a lot of people are like super penny pinchers and they want to like hold on to every single cent. Um, this is not the right path. So metaphysically speaking, if you're holding on to this money and you're so tight and you won't let it go and every, you know, you have to analyze things like um, obsessively in, in depth in order to release that money, you're actually preventing money from coming back into your life. And so if you want people to invest in your business, you should be investing in other people's businesses. If you want, um, you know, if you want abundance in any way, you should be investing in that way in order for that to circulate and come back around to you. Um, so where we will go from there, once you understand the flow, okay? So I get what I give. If I'm holding on, money's gonna hold away. Okay, you're, you're actually resisting the flow of money in. You have to be willing to just let it go. You have to. There's Money comes easily and frequently, and there is a very abundant amount of money on this planet. And so we know things like 4% um, of the population make 98% of the money. And it's because they know this little trick. They understand that... Um, to make money, you have to spend money, right? You've heard that before, but what does that really mean? And so, especially if you come from a lower class family like I do, you know, I wasn't raised with rich parents, like rich dad, poor dad. I have this book right here. Um, my parents were not wealthy when I was growing up. And so over the course of my adult life, I've had to come in and teach myself these things. And so very, very, you know, very important to know. You have to be willing to let it go in order to get it. And the more you let go, the more you get Fancy, right? Very fancy stuff. So the very first thing um, I want you to do to begin to set yourself up on your new paradigm, on your new money paradigm, is to clear your money blocks. And so you have, when you were growing up, somebody said, money doesn't grow on trees. And somebody else said, who do you think I am, Rockefeller? And somebody else said, uh, we can't afford that. You can't have that, we cannot afford that. And somebody else said, you have to work really, really hard for money. You have to work super hard for money. And somebody else said, um, you know, especially if you're a woman, that the only way that you can have a good life is to marry really well, you know? And so, and I mean, I certainly heard that when I was growing up. Um, or I certainly was given that impression, I'll say, when I was growing up. And so you have many options to clear out those blocks. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a money journal. And so allow your money journal to be um, a color that you love, something that makes you feel good when you see it. And you're going to begin your money uh, process, I guess, your money journey in your money journal. It has You have to write it down because what 
what gets recorded grows, right? And so we're we're made for prosperity and we're made for abundance. And get this money journal, something that you love, a color that you love, a, a texture that you love. You know, this is uh, this is embossed here, and you can see that the texture on here. I like touching this. This feels good to me to touch. I want to touch this. You know, and so um, you're going to begin writing out all of the things that you heard growing up and all of the, the weird triggers that you have are like, um, I know a lot of moms will spend a ton of money on their kids but won't spend any money on themselves because they don't feel worthy and they don't feel deserving. And so any negative memory you've ever had ever about money needs to go right into the journal, okay? Um, we're gonna clear those out using EFT, emotional freedom technique, or you can use hypnotherapy. Um, it is my experience that EFT is kind of uh, it, it works for you if you're um, if you don't have a lot of money or if you don't have um, a lot of resources around. But hypnotherapy, I found, is the big kahuna. It absolutely gets in and it just wipes that slate completely clean, and you're able to start really, really freshly. Um, and so those things, instead of being blocks, they just become memories, you know. And so um, next, the way that you use your journal is very important. And so I want you to write down every single cent that comes into your life. And so if it's finding a penny on the street, if it's getting a gift card for $50, if your friend buys you dinner, if you um, win a sweepstakes, maybe, you know, like one time I won an entire year of free flowers, right? From a uh, snuggle <laughs> dryer softener sheets, you know? Write that in there. Um, if you win the lottery, if you, get your paycheck, um, you get paid. If you have a yard sale, wh whatever money is coming in, it needs to be documented. Every single red cent, every cent is documented. And so um, uh, now that we're speaking of pennies, right? Um, another way that you can um, I'll let the universe know that you're willing to accept money um, because sometimes the universe thinks that you're not willing to accept it because you will walk right past money, right? And so um, I know that God will give you, uh, in the Christian faith, they believe that God will give you uh, smaller versions of what you're asking for to see if you will be a good steward or not, right? And uh, metaphysics kind of, kind of works in that same way. And so if you ask for money and then you walk past a dime on the street, that lets the universe know that you're really not interested in taking that money, you know? Pick that dime up, especially when you're in a situation where you're in polite company. Especially then, because you're letting the universe know, no matter what, this belongs to me. I asked for this, this belongs to me, and then you say thank you. Every time you write down a deposit in your, your journal, thank you, universe. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for the abundance and prosperity in my life, right? Um, the next thing that you can do is feng shui your home, feng shui your house. And so um, the back left corner of your master bedroom and the back left corner of your house, depending on how you walk through the front door, is your money corner. And so um, it, feng shui, you know, you can hire a consultant. It's been my experience that you can just Google this and do this for free. Um, you can set your house up in a way that allows for the flow of money and allows your front door, your front porch should be very beautiful, allowing money in. Um, I know in India, their culture, they sweep their porch every day. Um, that if Lakshmi, the goddess of uh, prosperity, would come to their home, that they would be prepared for her. And so um, just be mindful of having clean, clear space, right? Um, you want to get rid of all of the old junk. And so as you clear out the junk in your house and you get a little bit more organized, um, and I'm not talking about mess. I'm not talking about kids playing. I'm talking about having an abundance of stuff that you don't need. Um, you will create more space for stuff that you want, you know. Um, also with this, uh, this is something that I do with my wardrobe a couple of times a year. I will go in and I will literally have my wardrobe. I will take half of what is in there and I will donate it, I'll give it away or you know if it's got holes or whatever I'll toss it. Um, this is so that the universe knows that I'm constantly mindful of clearing, I'm getting rid of good and allowing in great. And so my wardrobe has you know dramatically upgraded over the course of the last few years that I've been doing this based on the metaphysical theory that you know I'm getting rid of good and great for great. It's it's incredible. It works so so well. Um, 
The next thing that I want you to do is to create a money avatar. And so I'm not talking about the movie avatar, but it kind of is the sa that same idea. And so you want to create, ladies, um, if you love men or if you love women, whatever your uh, preference is, it doesn't matter to me, whatever your ideal lover is. What does your ideal lover look like? What does your lover smell like? What does your lover uh, like to do? Like what kind of music does your lover listen to? Be mindful and create this avatar um, lover. And so this is now your money. Your money now has a face. Your money now has a body. Your money now has its own presence and energy and likes and dislikes. And so when you, um, I want you to stop thinking of money as a tool, which I know is a little bit weird, but I want you to start thinking of money as an individual, as a person that needs your respect and your love and your care. And so this is your end all be all partner and you only want them to be happy and you only want to reciprocate um, what it is that they're doing for you and so if your lover leaves you a dime on the street and you say oh baby oh thank you so much so you want to have an idea of what this person looks like what they would say to you and so if you get yourself in a situation where you're having a money emergency you can go into your meditation and say and see your lover face to face and say what is it that you need me to do and so when I do this sometimes my lover tells me um, I need you to respect me. You're not being a good steward of money. You're spending too freely. Or, um, you know, I, actually just yesterday I got, you need to start a nonprofit organization and help more people. You're not helping enough, right? And so um, you, you can begin to have a conversation with them. This is super woo-woo, super metaphysical stuff. Works like a charm, okay? Um, you want to have a whirlwind romance with your lover, right? So then um, I want to talk about tithing. And so um, in Christian faith, we tithe because we're told to. And um, I, don't, I don't know a single person who tithes that has money problems. I just don't. But in the metaphysical world, we also tithe based on the fact that we are showing the universe straight up that we trust that there's going to be more money. So if you get a check for $1,000 and you instantly send away $100. Um, you can pretty much send it wherever you'd like, but uh, for me, what I do personally, and this is a book actually called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity by Edwin Gaines. Beautiful gal, love her to pieces. Found her through Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. Uh, whatever feeds you spiritually, whatever, um, like if you listen to like say Joel Osteen on Sirius Radio, or if you listen to Dr. Beckwith's, um, you know, his services online, or what whatever it is, whatever it is, if you have a mentor that is a monk, I have mentors that are monks. If you you know what I'm saying, like whatever is truly feeding you spiritually, as long as it's not in your home, in your circle. So if your husband feeds you spiritually, unfortunately that money can't go to him because that's your own loop. But if your best friend feeds you spiritually, you absolutely can tithe to your best friend. Make a beautiful list. It's wonderful. Um, a friend of mine one time, his bike was broken down and somebody stopped him to help him with his bike and he tithed to that individual because that person you know, it was, you know, it was bad weather conditions and he didn't have to stop and do that and out of the goodness of his heart and it inspired him and so that's where his tithe went and it, I, I just love it. I love everything about it. So um, the very last part is thank your bills. When you get a check in the mail, you're like, yes, I got money, right? But when you get a bill in the mail, you're like, oh shit, there's another bill, right? Don't do that. Thank your bills, right? Thank you across the bill. Instead of writing paid across the bill, write thank you across the bill because a service has been provided to you, right? And so if you have a medical bill, that means you had medical care. If you have an electricity bill, that means you have electricity. If you have a credit card bill, that means whatever you decided to swipe that card on is present in your life already, right? And so you want to really, truly just be be in a place where you're so grateful for money. And so um, this is, I don't know if you've ever heard of Kate Northrup, and she wrote a book called Money, A Love Story. Um, a technique that she has is that uh, in your chakra system, your, your money center is in your sacrum, which is orange, right? And so if you've ever heard of kundalini yoga, um, you, you can move your physical body to activate your chakras as well. And so this is very metaphysical, but hang in there with me. And so she kind of um, gyrates her hips or undulates. I think the word is undulates her hips. 
and she gets herself a drink and she has nice music every week when she's taking care of her money situation. She's honoring her money. She's sending her money love. Um, she's undulating her hips first. And if she ever gets in a situation where she's uncomfortable with money, say you're in the lawyer's office and you're getting divorced or you're, um, I don't know, like you're waiting for a loan, but you're nervous about it, okay? Um, start to undulate your hips, male or female. Female tends to work a little bit more because we're, we're very used to moving our hips in that way. Um, but this kind of, it, it activates that energy in a very, very positive and healthy way, and oftentimes it will subside. Um, also, if you get into a situation where you're feeling nervous, tapping, emotional freedom technique, tapping, you can look this up on YouTube. I recommend Brad Yates, incredible, incredible man. Um, you can take your, you know, anxiety from a 10 to a 2 in like 10 minutes just by tapping and going through and just relieving the stress. And so money isn't about going out and, you know, being on the grind. Absolutely, you do have to put action into it, but money is more about how you feel about money. If you feel that you're broke, you're going to be broke. If you feel that all you can ever make is $40,000 a year, it's all you're ever going to make. If you feel like you're rich and you're a superstar and people just give you money and give you things for no reason at all, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a really awesome life. And so you have to change your internal thermostat. You have to change your mind about who you are with money. Now, I am kind of obsessed with this because it's so easy to manifest and it's so easy to bring into your life once you flip that switch and once you're over that hump and once, you know, understanding this stuff and listening to this stuff doesn't really do anything unless you're putting the action behind it. You have to be visioning and manifesting. You have to be following the law of attraction. Ask, believe, receive, right? Um, I teach a course on that please sign up for that course. Everybody needs to understand. I, I wish I could teach this to, to every kindergartner on this planet, you know? Um, you have to be in a good mood about money. So if you're in a shitty mood about money, money is going to be so shitty to you. If you're in a great mood, think, think of it if, with your spouse. If you're in a great mood about your spouse, your spouse is going to be awesome to you. If you're in a shitty mood about your spouse, your spouse is going to not be that great, right? Think about it. I want you to create that avatar and I want you to fuss over that avatar like you would your dream spouse, your dream partner, you know, get very serious about that. Um, this is so important if you're spiritual or if you're not spiritual, especially if you're spiritual, because if you're spiritual, you know you're here to serve and you can't serve anybody if you're broke. You cannot do it. We were intended to be prosperous. We were intended to be abundant and to be able to give freely right? And you can't give anything if you're eating ramen every day because that's all you can afford, right? You're going to be sick. Your body's not going to work right if you don't have enough money to eat the proper food and have the proper nutrition. So um, that was dollars and cents. Um, so we can start making sense of dollars, right? Uh, if you have questions, please, please, please contact me. It's This life is too short to be, be, to be living broke. You don't need to do it. It's the wrong way. You were taught improperly. There is a better way. There absolutely is a better way. So um, that, I say namaste. Have a fantastic day. Contact me. Hit me up. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about money.